Welcome to Lights and Perfection. For another moment in the Word, my name is Chris. And if this is your first time tuning in, uh, what we're going to do is just really quickly, it's kind of like a devotional, and we just want to jump right into the Word and do a quick, as we call it, moment in the Word. There are other playlists in this series. Um, we, we, you know, go into a lot of different things. This is just a, a really quick devotional type material, and we just want to jump right into the Word of God. I'm really excited to bring this Word for you. And we're coming out of Luke 10, and this is going to be verses 38 to 42. And I'm going to read from the New King James Version. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. Something that's going on in my life right now, and I'm sure many of you can relate to this, is I've been overburdened with a, an amount of work in my life, and that work is tempting me to draw away from sitting at the very feet of Jesus. Now, the way that that works is that, you know, sometimes we're, we're in, in a ministry position, or maybe it's with a job or a relationship or whatever it is that we're placing that, that temptation is always to place that before just sitting at the feet of Jesus. And while in this case, Jesus wasn't re necessarily rebuking Martha just because she was serving him. She had the right intentions, but in comparison to what Mary was doing, she was sitting at the feet of Jesus to listen to his instruction and his teaching, which was more needful than the actual serving part. And I'm sure you can relate with me. There's been times in my life, and I'm going to get into one of them really quick and give you an illustration of where I'm coming from. Um, but the times in our lives where we start to place the work above the one who's issuing the work. And, you know, we were called by grace through faith, not because we were something special, not because we were um, privileged or, or had, you know, everything going for us. Jesus saw us and he loved us and had compassion on us. And so that's where we want to come from is that place of rest, resting at the feet of Jesus. But there was a situation in my life, and this was shortly after I got released from prison, and I was in there and got out and I was hungry for the Lord. I got saved while I was in prison. I was really hungry and I was zealous for the work of the Lord and, and all that's right and good and true. And we shouldn't forsake zeal. We should be fervent in zeal. We should be burning and on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. But sometimes our zeal can overrule obedience to God's will in particular for our lives. So I got out and I said, you know, I really need to find a church. I need to get plugged in. I need to exercise the gifts that God gave me and just have fellowship so we can edify one another because I need edification too. But that just didn't seem to be God's plan for my life and it really bothered me and I went through a season and I even would talk about it with my other brothers in, in Christ and say, you know, I just don't understand because I had good, amazing, godly people that God surrounded me with. But all I could see was the institutional church, and that's where I needed to be. And, and I was bothered in prayer, and, and I kept crying out to God, saying, God, lead me to where I'm supposed to be. I, I feel like I'm being disobedient. And, and you know, looking back on it, hindsight's twenty twenty. That that was a lie from, you know, and it was the furthest thing from the truth. But And I'll get to that point. So as I was praying these things and just really longing to get involved and get plugged into a church, I remember having a specific conversation with a chaplain, our actually prison chaplain I had while in prison. He, he was able to reach out to me to see how I was doing and where I was at. And every time I would talk to him on the phone, I would discuss with him how I just can't wait to get into church and just to serve and use the gifts that God gave me. And, and he said to me, and he, he kind, it kind of, it didn't make a lot of sense at the time, but it's continually making more sense as I progress further in my walk. But he said, right now you don't need to focus on that. He said, you just need to grow more intimate with the Lord. And it didn't make a lot of sense, but I received it. Because I knew that God had inspired this man of God to speak into my life, and I didn't fully understand it, but I received it. 
And to make a long story short, I've been reflecting back on that because lately God has called me to do a lot of different things in the, in the ministry, at my job, and I feel like things are just being piled upon piled and upon piled on me in the desire or rather the temptation to drift away from just being still and in his presence has really befallen me and in this time and in this season in my life. And I say temptation because we are never exempt from temptation in these similar temptations. But what we do in these temptations makes all the difference. Because we feel this way doesn't make us sinners or, or um, under judgment by God. What this means is that this is an opportunity to really press in and to really get back to the feet of Jesus where we belong. And it, again, it doesn't mean that we've drifted far, far away, but the, the feeling of that temptation within our hearts is an indication, is a symptom that the enemy is trying to distract us. And so it's not to stop doing everything God's calling us to do, but it's to be still and know that he is God in the middle of what we are doing and to not let that be a burdensome task to us. Jesus made many references, and one of them he said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I think we should be serving the Lord from a position of rest. Now, back to what my chaplain had said. He said, you just need to grow intimate with the Lord. What he was referring to, and I really want you to get this, is that the best place to be is in the will of God, even if the will of God is in a place where you don't feel you should be. And I know somebody needs to hear that right now, and I know I need to just refuel on that, because as the Lord is speaking to me, I just really pray that he's opening up your hearts and your minds and your understanding to what he's doing in your life in particular. And I hope that this testimony could be an illustration for you. But I want to I want to make an even deeper illustration, and now this story that I'm about to say is just something that, that I believe the Lord gave me. It's not necessarily about anybody, but I want you to picture, if you will, a missionary who is just zealous to get in the field, to get in the mission field, to go out there and serve the Lord with gladness. He just wants nothing more than to get out in the mission field. But his zeal over could overrule his desire for that missionary work. And what if while praying for God to open the door, the, the missionary grew impatient and ended up getting a plane ticket to a faraway land to go, to go missionize and had nothing but repeated failure after failure. I want you to I want, I really want you to understand this illustration because what if that time that that he was supposed to wait on the Lord for the Lord himself to open that door to send him on that missionary journey it was a time of preparation. And sometimes we don't realize that the seasons that we're in are times of preparation and all we need at that time is to sit at the feet of Jesus and while we see everybody else going about serving and and doing the work of the Lord we feel like we're left out we feel like we're on the bench saying well, God, what about me? What are you going to do with me? And we're crying out to him. And the temptation to jump ahead of God's plan for our lives is imminent. And it's barreling down on us. And we feel the pressure because we see, well, this group of people is doing something. And this group of people is doing something. We must not grow distracted and anxious about what everybody else is doing. But to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And to know that everything else will be added unto us. And so... It is our prayer that, that we would just be found pure and blameless before God so that we could be used by God in whatever situation and caliber he would desire to use us in. But again, that he would use us and not we use him and not we jump ahead of his will. And so this situation with Martha and Mary, I could picture Martha just getting upset, looking at Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus. But yet Jesus said, Martha, you're troubled and anxious about all sorts of things. But one thing is needed. And that one thing is needed not just for Mary and Martha, but for you and me as well. And I really pray that this word would just open up those doors of revelation for you and that you would just, just hope and find encouragement in the Lord Jesus Christ as he prepares you for the calling that he has for you. As always, we pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen.